In this video, we will explore the greedy coloring algorithm used to color the vertices of graphs. The typical problem you might see would look like this. Use the greedy coloring algorithm with the vertices in alphabetical order to color the vertices with this graph. Notice that the graph looks a little bit different than some of the other graphs you might have seen, where instead of solid black circles representing the vertices, we've got open circles. Those circles are open so that there's room for you to fill in the color that's going to correspond to each vertex. Now, what does the alphabetical order have to do with anything? Well, if you remember the greedy coloring algorithm, it goes a little something like this. First, we need to choose an order for the vertices. If the problem doesn't specify an order, then you need to be specific as to which order you're using. Typically, however, the problem will actually tell you what order to use. In this case, our problem told us that we wanted our vertices to be in alphabetical order. For step two, we also want to choose a list of colors in some order. Just to make things simple, we'll have color number one, color number two, color number three, and so on. If you have colored pens or colored pencils, then you can make your pictures look nice by actually filling in the color themselves, but be sure to specify which number color you have so that your answer will look the same as someone else's answer, even if you choose different colors. Your numbers will still match up. Now that we've got our vertices in order and our colors, now we're ready to use the greedy algorithm. In order, we're going to color each vertex using the first available color on the list with the rule being that we want to make sure that no two adjacent vertices are the same color. And remember that vertices are adjacent if they are directly connected by an edge. That's the only rule. As long as we make sure that we never have adjacent vertices that are the same color, we just want to use the lowest numbered color we can at each step. And then we continue in that way until the each vertex is colored. So let's go back to our problem. So we have alphabetical ordering for our vertices, so the first vertex we want to try to color is A. But since nothing's colored so far, there's nothing preventing us from using color number one. Now we're ready to color our next vertex, which is vertex B. But since B is connected directly to A by an edge, we can't use color number one for B. That would violate our coloring rule. So instead, we have to use color number two for B. Now we're ready to color our next vertex in order. That's vertex C. C is connected to A, so we can't use color number one. And C is connected to B, so we can't use color number two. So we have to use color number three. Next up is D. D is connected to B, so we can't use number 2. D is connected to C, so we can't use number 3. So you might be thinking, now we need to use color number 4. But notice that D is not connected to any vertices that are colored with color number 1. So we want to use the lowest numbered color that's available at any step. And so we're going to use color number 1. Next up is vertex E. We can't use color number 1 because E is connected to D. But we can use color number 2 because E is not connected to any vertex that's colored with color number 2. Next up is vertex F. We can't use number 1 because F is connected to A. We can't use number 2 because F is connected to E, so we'll use color number 3. Finally, for vertex G, since G is not connected to anything that's colored with number 1, we can use color number 1 for G. And this completes the coloring of the graph. So that's the greedy coloring algorithm. So if you're given a graph and an order for the vertices, that's how you'll color the vertices. But sometimes you'll get a problem that looks like this. Here we have a map and we're told that this is the island nation of Mathland, and that we have to color the states of this island nation using the greedy coloring algorithm with the states in alphabetical order. So the first thing that we'll need to do is translate our map into a graph. Let's start by drawing the vertices. We'll draw one vertex for each state, and we'll try to place them roughly in the same position that they appear on the map. You don't have to get too accurate here, but it'll make it easier in the next step if you have your vertices around the same places that your countries, our states in this case, are located. Now remember that the way that we're going to translate this map into our graph is to connect two vertices by an edge if the corresponding states share a border. So if we do that, our graph is going to look a little something like this. Notice that we've got four states, B, H, C, A, and C, O, that on the map all appear to meet at a single point. Now by convention, we don't worry about those two states that meet at a point. So we're not going to connect B to CA by an edge, and we're not going to connect H to CO by an edge. Since they don't share a border, they only share that single point that doesn't count as being connected using our rule of thumb. So now we're ready to color this graph. And again, we're told to use alphabetical order. So since we've got a large number of vertices here, it's helpful to make a list of the vertices in alphabetical order. So here's that list, all the way from A at the top down to P at the bottom. So A will be the first vertex that we'll color. And again, using our greedy coloring algorithm, we want to use the lowest numbered color at any step. Since nothing's colored so far, we can color vertex A with color number one. Next up is vertex B. B is not connected to anything that's been colored so far, so B can also be color number one.
next in line is CA. Again, CA is not connected to anything that's been colored yet, so CA can be color number one as well. Now we're up to CO. CO is connected to a couple of ones, so it can't be color number one, but it can be color number two. Next up is E. E is connected to A, which is colored with number one, so E can't be number one, but it can be number two. F is connected to a couple of ones, so it can't be one, but it can be two. Next up is G. G is connected to A, so G can't be number one. G is connected to F, so G can't be number two, but it can be number three. Next up we have H. H is connected to some ones, it's connected to a two over at F, and it's connected to a three at G, so H can't be one, it can't be two, it can't be three, so H is going to have to be color number four. Next up we have L. L is connected to an, a one, so it can't be color number one. It's connected to a two, so it can't be color number two. But it's not connected to any threes, so L can be color number three. Finally, we have P. P is connected to CA, which is colored with number one, so it can't be one. P is connected to CO, which is colored with color number two, so it can't be two, but P can be color number three. Now, how does this help us color the map that we started with originally? Well, if we put our colored graph next to our map, all we need to do now is translate the colors from our graph back over to the countries on our map. And so what we see is that since vertex A was colored blue, the country Agnesi gets colored blue as well. Vertex E was colored with color number two, so country Euleria gets colored with color number two as well. And so you can see how the colors of the countries match up with the colors on the graph.